Dying Mac channel, welcome. Right, today I just sat down here and I was gonna naturally just start doing this and I thought, no, I'll make a video about it because uh, it might be useful. I think it's good advice to, to share with people. And this channel is just about me sharing my knowledge and experience of uh, two decades being a full-time jeweler. So uh, what I'm on about is maintaining tools, yeah? Because you know, pliers and stuff, like you're holding things in your pliers and they get a bit damaged from hitting files, tweezers, holding things when you're soldering they get all burnt and damaged the tips go blunt don't always need sharp tweezers but uh, the ones that you do want sharp it's nice to keep them sharp so things wear out a little bit when you're making jewelry so sometimes just sometimes i sit down and i just sort out all my tools i'm talking about just my hand tools that are around me here i'm not going over everything in one go so yeah i'll get into that and i said thank you to these new patrons we got kieran hayes zuzana lavin and armen enikop Nikolopov. <laughs> Thank you very much guys. I uh, really appreciate becoming patrons. Uh, as always, very grateful to all the patrons. They really genuinely do make a big difference to me and my abilities to keep the channel going. So uh, if you want to help me out and share more of what I learned over the last two decades of uh, being a professional jeweler, you can become a Diamond Matter member. Look out for a join button on the Diamond Matter page. Uh, or you can become a patron. There's a patronship to attach to the channel. So there's links for all that in the description. And uh, yeah, much appreciated and will genuinely be a decent contribution to me being able to share everything I've learned over the years. All right, let's get into it. I'll grab these first of all. These pliers, yeah, I want them nice and flat on the end. So I use my paper discs a lot on these. I wouldn't recommend using your files on them because it's quite a hard steel. It's not an impossible thing to file, but it's going to wear out your files more than you really want. Because all these tools, yeah, they are really designed for working on soft, precious metals. So when you start mucking about with steel, you kind of balls them up a little bit. Um, we balls them up a lot. Uh, what was I going to do? Yes, paper disc. If you haven't got these, I mean, you can do it at bus sticks, but these are just so fast and so neat. Um, put it out a little bit. Come on, sort it out. Making a video. Right, so, uh, yeah, I just... <laughs> <sighs> right. <laughs> first, first thing in the morning, making a video <laughs> it always goes like this. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, just hold them closed. These are cheap old ones. I've had these pretty much my entire career. I think I've only been working a few years in my apprenticeship. I've got these. So they were cheap, not not high quality, but they are lasting all this time. But they're a bit wobbly and worn out. So uh, anyway, yeah, like the ends go a bit sort of rounded and stuff. I just touch over them. And just get them nice and sharp again. Next, with my pliers, I will get anything, a bit of cocktail stick, or just a, this is a bit of a straightened paper clip. Just touch a bit of oil in there. And the, it's likely you will feel it smoothen up nicely. You can have a bit of tissue to hand as well, just wipe off the excess. There you go. Maybe that's partly why these lasted so many years, because uh, I do look after them. Uh, you know, because we're. we're the job is quite dusty, yes. Yeah, so you get dust and stuff in there, they get a bit grindy and, I don't know, just wear and tear in it and all moving parts. So things like this, side cutters, they feel a bit rough. I mean, there's no problem really, but just a bit of oil sometimes helps you out. There you go, it instantly feels better. Using my magic oil, I've got to start offering this for sale. It's so good. Every time I use it, I'm just like, wow. But any oil, any um, like three-in-one type oil, there's kind of smooth, even spray oil will work. Uh, these go blunt, yeah. I know some jewelers, I've, I've worked with different jewelers over the years, that always, some jewelers are always sharpening these and I think you wear them out more, you sort of do more harm than good because you've got to get that angle perfect, yeah. If you muck it up a little bit, they don't close nicely, they stop working, they don't really snip through things. You've got a, you've got a worn out pair or been sharpened badly, you've got to sort of grip it and then twist it a little bit or grip it and pull it to get things to separate. So I, I'm a bit nervous of sharpening these often, but I have done it a few times. But be careful because it's, it's important that they close up really nicely on these. So unless they're really not working, they've gone really blunt. Um, yeah, leave them alone. So I don't, don't snip through steel things, basically. You should be all right with gold and not make too much of a difference. But yeah, <laughs> be careful with your side cutters, that's all. Uh, these cheap ones, I've used these a few times. Basically, these I bought these from a pound shop, uh, just hooked over the end. The idea was, if I've got a ring, 
like I put that in a ring and then I can squash down on top of the claws. It, they came in really useful when I needed them, but I haven't really touched them since. Not really much of a setter. It's a bit dusty. I'll leave those alone. Not important enough for me to get more oil out on those. So I'm just going over all my pliers like this. Sharpening the top if I need to. Makes them look nice. If nothing else. Full of dust, just brush that dust out. If you're working in gold and stuff, all this lemon that's getting stuck in all these little crevices, it's got value, so it's worth getting it in your skin and collecting. They feel like they would improve with a bit of oil in them, so a bit of oil they're gonna get. Smoother, hear that? So, as they say, look after your tools and they look after you. They're not impossible. But these tools, yeah, not impossible to break. I mean, these are massive. These are unlikely to snap. But I think pliers like this size, and the usual jeweler's size pliers, they just snap off after a while. Like, I snapped off one of these. These are my second pair of those. Uh, a few pairs of these over the years. You're just using them, and then they just go crunk. They just crack. I don't know what's... What's what? They just get hardened or the stress from squeezing things all the time. But you, know, you can just squeeze that. I can, I can bend the metal. It's not steel, it's hard wearing, but not impossible to break. So you do have to sort of treat things with a little bit of care. Especially things like that. Pointy, round, snipey nose things. I really must learn the proper words for these tools. I'm really bad for that. So yeah, it feels a bit rough. I'll give it a bit of oil. Just gonna sort it out. Reduces wear and tear. Just makes them feel nice as well when using them. There you go, done. Uh, just looking how they close up, if I can touch the end if I need to. I'm not really using these pliers much. Look at the end, you can see how they line up and stuff. Ah, tin snips. Could do a re replacing these. I'm sure I did buy a pair, and I think I gave them away because they were just so horrible to use. My old worn out pair that weren't as sharp were, were nicer. But again, with these, you can sharpen up. You can sharpen them up and get rid of rusty bits and stuff, but you've got to be a bit careful with them because if you start separating the blades a little bit, even when you start mucking about with this, you can see I've hammered mine to try and this will go loose over years. I've just hammered it down because turning it wasn't doing it. Just start to squash them down to get them working. They are working all right at the moment, but I expect these to stop being effective. Um, yeah. I mean, try, try it on a pair of scissors, try and sharpen them and get them to work. It doesn't, unless you're super, super accurate, it doesn't really work. So same with tin snips, you've got to be careful when you're trying to sharpen them, but you can do it, you can, uh, you can change them for the better. See, so, yeah, I look at the side, see how they close up, look at the end, there's always the corners kind of go. So just take the metal down a little bit. You don't want to be doing this too often because you are basically wearing out your tools even more. <laughs> So just sometimes, like, I honestly don't even think I do this like once a year. Just clean off the surface a little bit. Sometimes you get like sticky something in there. I don't know what, what happens, but they basically get dirty and worn out. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm cleaning them, cleaning them, sharpening them up, maintaining them. These tweezers, these are stone tweezers, but that crisscrossy grip on the end wasn't really doing its job well enough. So what I did was I cut a little groove just down the center there and there, and then I can use that to pick up a stone really easily. Especially if the stone's upside down, you can just grab it. Come on. I can just grab it really quickly and easily, and that's really secure in the, in the tweezers straight away. So any size stone fits in there and uh, yeah, useful. So if your tweezers don't already have that, you can do it yourself, basically. So that's useful for those. And I just thought I'd mention that because I saw looking at the ends of all my tweezers. Yeah, these big ones, these get quite beaten up quite bad. It's not too important the ends match up because I am using these. You can see I've hooked them a little bit just for holding rings. They're doing that a lot. That, that's kind of their, their job. They hold rings like that when I'm doing a solder on the top. Needle files, mine are all dusty, got white dust in them because I was filing, what's it called, uh, sort of resin stuff I was making something with. Anyway, so 
I needed my needle files to work on it. So they're all full of dust. That dust can affect you, but you should be. Depends on what it is. You can brush it out re re reasonably easily. Uh, if I really want to, I can just ultrasonic them. As long as you dry them afterwards, you don't have a problem. So brush in direction of the, the file blades. Just clean out the files a little bit. Just check over them. Um, do it over your skin, obviously, because you're brushing out precious metal. You don't want to lose it. Same on your bigger files. Uh, this has got bits of aluminium in when I was doing an aluminium video. It all clogged up my... It's supposed to be a non-stick file. It's got stuff sticking in it. It does look nice and new still, though. I'll give it that. Anyway, clear it out. This brush, not very strong for getting metal out of your file, so get a, like a metal bristles brush. It's going to do a better job doing that. All right, I have done this in the past. I had a like drill sharpening session. Um, I'm not going to do this today, but just looking at a few. There's one, I remember the end, just the end chipped a little bit, so I just flattened it, so it's, it's prepared for sharpening. But if I wanted to, like if I had time, uh, I'll just go around them, just making sure they're all sharp and ready to go. It's nice to have a, a selection of drills and you just know they're all ready to go. So that's something you can do if you really want to go to town preparing all your tools. Uh, that's basically it, just looking around at things in front of me. You can always, it's good work in practice to keep your bench clean. I'm not setting good examples. I'm quite messy with my stuff, especially in this corner that's on camera. Uh, partly because when I was at work, I was more tidy, but you're sort of doing one thing at a time. When I, another place I worked was doing more repairs. You end up sort of soldering a chain, that goes in the acid, while that's in the acid, you pick up a ring, you start preparing it for uh, putting a piece in it, so milling out a bit of metal or something, and then when that's soldered in, then that goes in the acid, take the chain out, get that dry, it goes to the polisher motor, and then when that's in the ultrasonic, and then you get another job, and then you end up like two or three jobs quite commonly. I used to do any other way I used to work. Two or three jobs on the go at the same time. So apart from that, uh, if you're just making stuff, it's preferential to do one thing at a time or just concentrate and focus on getting one thing and doing it really well. So it was easier working like that to keep things tidy and organised. Like I would finish the job, I'd tidy up, sweep all the dust, collect all the lemon and stuff, sort it all out, and then all my tools are all organised and tidy for the next job. Yeah, so basically just look after your stuff you use, keep it in its optimum working condition, things like soldering equipment, like have a check of the hoses, the conditions of them stuff, and uh, you've not got little bits on the end, keep that clean so it all works correctly and safely as well. But yeah, that's it. That's all I can think of today. That's all I would have done. Um, cool. So thanks for watching. If you want to help me out, click like and subscribe, notification bell and all that, and take it a step further. You can become a patron or a Diamond Mountain member. Links in the description for all that. And hope to see you on the next video. See ya. Bye.